Good evening. Here is the world news from DJI TV Currents. First, the headlines. To number six, UK support on projects to transport Nigeria gas to Europe. Labour returns to dialogue with FG on strength of President's commitments. FG files contempt proceeding against NLC, TUC over protests. On foreign, Niger coup. U.S. government commences evacuation of citizens and sport. Super Falcons prize money will be paid by NFL. The news shortly. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu has called on the government of the United Kingdom to deepen its partnership with Nigeria and Africa by investing more across sectors. In a statement on Wednesday, our jury in Gilali, media aide to the president, said Tinubu spoke when he received James Cleverly. UK Foreign Secretary in his office. While addressing the present issue of energy transition and opportunity for economic growth in Africa and Nigeria, Tinumbu charged cleverly on the imperative of the West, especially the UK, in mobilizing investments to pipe gas from Nigeria to Europe. The Western Economic Programme should be able to help Nigeria pipe our gas to Europe since gas is acceptable as alternative clean energy. You must help us with the finance and facilities to facilitate the investment we require, in Ghanale quoted Tinumbu as saying. The president said the UK government must work with Nigeria and the rest of Africa to create a competitive, technologically advanced economy that will cater for the needs of all citizens. On democracy, peace and stability in West Africa, Tinumbu said that security would remain a challenge as long as there are unstable governments in the sub-region. He used the opportunity of the visit to decry the situation in Niger the Sahel region and all of Africa where terrorists are finding comfort. He asked the government of UK to support Nigeria to secure West Africa. On his path, cleverly saluted Tinubu for taking bold and decisive actions on fuel subsidy removal and on multiple foreign exchange markets, which he said will bring development to the country despite the current pains. He told Tinubu about his meeting in Lagos with entrepreneurs, technologists and young people in the creative sector saying that his home government remains a strategic long-term partner of Nigeria and Africa. Cleverly said he was in Nigeria to promote bilateral and economic partnership. The Nigeria Labour Congress NLC and Trade Union Congress of Nigeria, TUC, are resolved to return to the negotiating table with the federal government to tackle what they termed as anti-poor people policies. The announcement was contained in a statement on Wednesday by NLC President Joe Ajairo and TUC President Festus Osifo, coming amid nationwide protests after Conservative Fuel Price Act, stemming from President Bola Tinumbu's insistence on ending subsidies on petrol spanning decades. Moments after Ajairo and Osifo met with Tinumbu at the presidential villa, the unions revealed that the president had made commitment. On the strength of the president's pledge and commitment, we have decided for a return to a new and reinvigorated dialogue process to allow the full implementation, the statement said. Once again, we thank Nigerians while we wait for the government to fulfill its own path of the understanding as agreed with His Excellency, the President. The Labour leaders argued that the extent of the success of the protest was underlined by the request of the President to meet with the leadership of the NLC and TUC in a closed-door session. Describing the engagement as fruitful, they noted that Tenumbu committed to an immediate restructuring of the framework for engagement in line with the input of the Labour leaders. He let out a certainty that the Port Harcourt refinery will commence production by December this year, the union stated. He pledged to ensure that agreement is reached on the wage award for Nigerian workers immediately. He promised to unveil a workable roadmap to the CNG alternative next week. The federal government has dragged the Nigerian Labour Congress NLC and the Trade Union Congress TUC to cough over alleged contempt of court for embarking on an industrial action against a June 5, 2023, ex order by the National Industrial Court. Information reported that notice of consequence of disobedience to order of court filed by before NIC in Abuja was addressed to NLC President Joe Ajairo, Deputy President Audu Aruba, Prince Adeyonju Adewale and Kabiru Saini, General Secretary Emmanuel Ubuaja, TUC President Engineer Festus Osifo, Scribe and Chief Executive Nobu Toro. 
The FG also attached a copy of the expertise made by Justice Anoue on June 5th, 2003 to the notice of contempt proceeding forwarded to the NLC and TUC officials. The other reading path having therefore considered the totality of this application, I make the following orders. The defendant respondent are hereby restrained from embarking on the planned industrial action or strike of any nature pending the hearing and determination of the motion on notice dated June 5th, 2023. It is ordered that the defendant respondent be immediately served with the originating processes in this suit, the motion on notice, and the order of this court hereby made. The motion on notice is hereby fixed for hearing for June 19, 2023. The hearing notices to that effect shall be served on the defendant respondent along with other processes. The Defense Headquarters says the Armed Forces of Nigeria has not received an order for any military intervention in the Republic of Niger following the coup that led to the ouster of President Mohamedou Bazoum. IME spokesperson to Krugusau in a statement on South Thursday said it is no longer news that some members of the Republic of Niger Armed Forces seize power from a democratically elected president through unconstitutional means. The DHQ added in reaction to this illegal takeover of government. The ECOWAS Act of Government met and a series of options were reached on how to intervene in this crisis. The statement explained that a military option was the last option to be taken in case every other option fails to reverse the situation and return the Nigerian Republic to a constitutional order. At the moment, the DHQ stated ECOWAS Committee of Chiefs of Defense staff is currently holding an extraordinary meeting in Abuja to discuss the political situation in the Republic of Niger and submit their plans to the Committee of Heads of State and Government of ECOWAS for consideration. It stressed that the Armed Forces of Nigeria cannot proceed on any operation in any of the member states of ECOWAS without a mandate from the authority of Heads of States and Governments. Former Governor Abdullahi Umar Ganduje has been appointed the National Chairman of All Progressive Congress APC. Ganduje was appointed the APC Chairman at the party's 12th National Executive Meeting Thursday in Abuja. The party's neck also elected former Senator Spokesman Ajibola Bashiru as the National Secretary. Ganduje, who promised to hit the ground running, thanked President Tinubu and promised that internal democracy would prevail in the party during its tenure. The ex kanu governor pledged to ensure a scientific register of party members and pay the utmost attention to election management and conflict resolution. Total pension assets in Nigeria are rising by 1.77 trillion naira in the first half of 2023 from 14.99 trillion naira in December 2022 to 16.76 naira trillion naira at the end of June 2023. Membership also increased by 146,920 new contributors from 9.86 million members as of the end of 2022 to over 10 million members as of June 2023. The Director General National Pension Commission, PENCOM, Mrs. Aisha Dahir Umar, made the revelations on Thursday in Lagos at the 2023 Journalist Conference organized by the Commission for members of the press covering pension matters. Dairo Umer, who was represented by head of corporate communication, Pencom, Mr. Abelkadir Dahiru, further stated that the CPS has ensured that public and private sector workers can build retirement service throughout their working lives, fostering financial security during their golden ages. The theme of this year's workshop is Transforming Service Delivery in Pension Industry, Strategies for Improving Efficiency and Customer Satisfaction. She said it reflects PENCOM's commitment to continuous service improvement in the pension industry so that contributors and retirees received the best possible experience. She said the Genesis Congress is a statement and testament of PENCOM's commitment to enhancing the knowledge and understanding of the contributing pension scheme and its impact in the lives of contributors and retirees. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, on Wednesday told the governorship election petition tribunal sitting in Abelkuta Metropolis that a fletcher of evidence before the panel were enough to defend the mandate of Governor Dako Abiodun declined to call any witness. Recall that almost all witnesses called by the People's Democratic Party, PDP, 
across the state presented similar statements with substantial contradictory made positions and established lies after being thoroughly cross-examined. Also, its star witness and expert invited by the party came up with huge discrepancies and inconcilable data in their separate presentations, thereby making counsel to the fourth respondent, Ainek Olumide Ogidon, San, to submit that substantial grounds needed to be argued through witnesses' statements had been explicitly established before tribunal during cross-examination. Okidon therefore prayed the panel for the fourth respondent to close its case, that is, even as it solicited for more days to attend to issues surrounding the reply of the petitioners, citing experiences and exigencies at presidential election tribunal in Abuja. In the same vein, counsel to second respondent, Governor Dako Abiodun, Professor Taiwo Oshipiton, San, aligned with the prayer of the counsel to the first respondent, saying all the counsels to respondent were on the same page on prayer for more days to move Abuja, to move to Abuja and for the new subpoena to get prepared. Also, counsel to third respondent, APC, Mr. Tayo Oyetibo, San, restated before the panel a new application which had just been served on the petitioners and other respondents on the ground that the paragraph of the petitioners reply and witnesses statement on oath sought to be struck out but introduced new facts tending uh, to add to the content of the petition. He had that the paragraph under review were highly prejudicial, prejudicial to the third respondent. According to him, the new allegations of facts pleaded in some paragraphs of the petitioners reply raised issues which the third respondent could not have the opportunity to respond to. Meanwhile, counsel to the petitioners, Godi Uche San, in his response said, We have been served with the application, but we shall vehemently oppose the application. The tribunal in its ruling said, The adjournment became necessary despite the fact that it didn't want to prepare judgment in a hurry. It, however, adjourned the case till Friday, 4th August 2023. In case of those joining, you are watching the world news from BGI TV Current. Next to come. Two priests of St. Luke's Catholic Church, Gietnam Garam Ward in Tapa, local government area of Niger State, Father Paul Sonogo and Seminarian Melcho have been reportedly abducted by gunmen, suspected to be bandit. Information gathered that the priests were kidnapped in the early hours of Thursday at their residence. Residents told that uh, the kidnappers shot into the air for an hour before they weeks away the two priests. The Catholic Bishop of Mina, Most Reverend Father Dr. Martin Igwe Uzoku, in a message he sent to church members and shared with correspondents, said the two priests were pastoral workers at St. Louis Catholic Church, Vietnam. Part of the message read, on behalf of my auxiliary Most Reverend Sylvester, Luca Gope, the priest and religious of the Catholic Diocese of Mina, I request for your prayers for Father Paul Sonogo and Seminarian Melchior, who were kidnapped by bandits in the early hours of Thursday, 3rd, 2023 of August, at the priest's residence at the Vietnam Ninja States. Father Paul Sonogo and Seminary Melchio are pastoral workers seven at St. Luke's Catholic Church, Vietnam, Niger State. We pray the Lord, hears our prayers, and bring them back in peace. When contacted, the Niger State Police Command spokesperson, SP Wasiu Abiodun, confirmed the incidents. To foreign story. The United States of America declared that it had ordered the temporary departure of non emergency employees in Niger and their families. In a statement by Matthew Miller, a Department of State spokesperson, the U.S. said, given ongoing development in Niger and out of an abundance of caution, the Department of State is ordering the temporary departure of non-emergency U.S. government personnel and eligible family members from the U.S. Embassy in Niamey. The U.S. also updated its travel advisory, urging its citizens not to travel to the country. The statement also stressed that the U.S. has no higher priority than the safety and security of its citizens overseas, including U.S. government personnel serving abroad. Although the embassy in Niger remains open, it will only attend to limited and emergency services for U.S. citizens as routine consular services are suspended. Miller also stressed that the U.S. remains committed to its relationship with the people of Niger and Nigerian democracy. Reiterating the U.S. position on the coup, Mila declared that the U.S. rejects all efforts to overturn Niger's constitutional order and stand with the people of the country. The Economic Community of West African State ECOWAS, the African Union, and other international partners in support of democratic governance 
and respect for the rule of law and human rights. Finally, sports. The chairman of the Nigeria Women's Football League, Aisha Fulade, has reiterated that the Nigeria Football Federation will still be responsible for the payment of 2023 Women's World Cup prize money for the Super Falcons. Falcon Fulade made this known on the backdrop of a report that FIFA will directly pay the Super Falcons player their money instead of the NFF. Recall that every player participating in the World Cup group state will earn 30,000 US dollar. The mark bonuses will rise to 60,000 US dollar in the second round of the competition. However, followed in an interview with Lagos, in Lagos said that FIFA did not say it would pay the players directly, but then she said that NFF will receive the funds from which to pay the Super Falcons. FIFA did not say it would pay the players directly as the information reads. It says, walking through the member association, walking through your federations, we will pay you this money through the federations. FIFA will pay the federations the money and the federation pays the players with the instruction. Everybody knows it is there in black and white, Father Day said. With that sports story, we've come to the end of today's world news from BGI TV comments. Before we go, some headlines. Tinumbu 6 UK support on project to transport Nigerian gas to Europe. Labour returns to dialogue with FG on strength of president's commitments. FG files contempt proceeding against NLC, TUC over protest. And on foreign, Niger coup, US government commence evacuation of citizens. And on sport, Super Falcons prize money will be paid by NFF. For more updates of our broadcast on YouTube, our handle is BGI TV Current. Kindly subscribe and click on the notification bell. Select option all to access all of our broadcasts. On Facebook, Bagede Imo with Alawiye Adebayo. Please like and follow the page. For other placement of your goods and services, coverage of events and functions, please dial the phone number streaming on your screen. Thank you for watching. I am Morire Rabila Lawa. Good evening.